Hi, my name's Hamish, I'm a grade two flying instructor here at Learn to Fly Melbourne, and today we're gonna to be looking at completing a pre-flight for one of our 172R model aircraft. We're gonna start off with the cockpit and organize the cockpit ready for our flight. From there, we're gonna then look at the tail section of the aircraft, moving up to the right wing, the engine and the nose, back to the left wing, and then back into the cockpit, and finally getting it ready for flight. Your pre-flight inspection starts when you're walking out to the aircraft. When you approach the aircraft, you should visually check the airplane for general condition, and it should be parked in a normal ground attitude. If the wings are not level or dropping to one side, look at the tyres. There is a possibility the tyre is flat and will require to be re-inflated. One of the first things we need to check when we enter the cockpit is that our documentation is correct and legal to fly the aircraft. So with our folder from the operations room, we can open this up and we can inspect the flight sheet, the maintenance release and all the other required documents for the flight. So one of the first documents as a pilot you have to check is the aircraft's pilot operating handbook. In here you'll have the certificate of registration, the standard certificate of airworthiness and the approved operating manual for the actual aircraft itself. In here you'll find takeoff performance charts, pre-flight procedures, emergency procedures. The next document we're going to look at is the Garmin GNS 430 user guide. That needs to be on board the aircraft and you'll more than often find that located in the, the uh, back passenger compartment seat. From there we go into our, our black folder. Inside this folder we'll have the aircraft running sheet. This is to be filled in with the date, the pilot in command's name, the student or the flight's detail, the time that the engine starts and the time that the maintenance release starts alongside your fuel startup and any oil added to the aircraft. Next up, we need to check the daily inspection form. On here, we have a few different sections. At the top here, we have the aircraft's type, which is a 172R, and the registration Sierra Yankee Hotel. The maintenance release expires on a specific date or on a specific time, whatever comes first. We then go through the first section here, which gives you the maintenance required, and we check that. 50 hourly service has either been completed or it hasn't been completed. If it has been completed, the next service is the 100 hourly. Continue working down the maintenance release into the endorsement section. This will be, this will tell us where anything is wrong on the aircraft. So during our inspection, if you find something that's wrong, we can list it here on the, on the running sheet. So once you've completed the pre-flight, or what's commonly known as the daily inspection, as a licensed pilot, you'll need to fill in the date, your name, and the license number, and from where the hours have come from the last flight. So this needs to be signed before the engine is even started. Part of our cabin inspection is the removal of the pitot tube cover. This pitot tube cover is located on the pitot tube to stop any insects, bugs, or debris entering the tube while the aircraft's not flying. It's important as part of your pre-flight to remove the pitot tube cover as well as placing it back on after the flight's been completed. Once we've removed the pitot tube cover, we can then come back into the cockpit, have a look at the glass shield panel, and remove any of the control column locks and throttle locks. So once we've removed the pitot tube cover, we can then come back into the cockpit and continue preparing it. The first thing you need to check is that the park brake is on and engaged. If we find that the park brake it's found like this, that means it's off, so to engage it, push your toes on the rudder pedals, pull it out, and then down. Next up, we need to remove the control column lock. Place that in the pocket. We need to remove the throttle lock. Make sure that the magnetos are in the off position. Switches are all off. And then turn the master on. Fuel quantities we can check. Making sure that the low fuel enunciator is not shown. Avionics 
can be turned on listening for the cooling fans. So you can hear the cooling fans without turning the A-fans off. Alternate static valve will be pushed off. The enunciated panel switch, we have three sections that we need to test. Down is dim, back to bright, and then we can test that all the enunciators are shown. Fuel selector needs to be in the both position, found in the left or the right. You need to make sure you rotate that to the right position. Fuel shot off valve be on. Lights and pedo heat, we need to turn them all on. Beacon should already be on. Landing, taxi, nav, strobe, pedo heat on. Extend the flaps to the full 30 degrees. Once you've turned the pedo heat and all of the lights on, you'll need to conduct an external inspection. Check that the taxi and landing lights are both on. The left nav and strobe lights are on. There should be a steady red and a flashing strobe. For the tail nav, you'll need to see a steady white light and a red rotating beacon. On the right wing, you'll need to check the right nav light and strobe, which should be a steady green and a flashing white strobe light. Once you have checked the lights, you'll then need to check the pedo heat. Gently touch it to check that it's warm. Turn the pedo heat off, strobe light off, nav light off, taxi and landing lights off. Master, off. Reset the trim to the takeoff position, so aligning the, the white bar to the white arrow. And then exit the cockpit, check the baggage door, and the static source is checked off. Once we exit the aircraft and start our visual walk around inspection, uh, the first thing we need to look at is the baggage compartment door. You can push it in, so it's pushed open. If you can't push it in, that means the door's locked. Uh, if you can push it in, it means the door's unlocked and you need to lock it before the tank. Okay, once we've inspected the baggage door, we need to then check the static source. So the static source is flush mounted to the aircraft. We need to make sure that this little hole is clear of any debris, bugs, insects. Uh, the reason being, if that's blocked, we're not going to be able to get any altitude or vertical speed. So if during your pre-flight inspection you find that the pedo tube is blocked or the static vent is blocked, you need to notify your instructor immediately. The second step of our pre-flight inspection on the 172R model is the empennage. The empennage is a French word and it means an arrangement of stabilizing controls at the rear or tail end of the aircraft. So we're going to work our way down the fuselage to the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator, check that the tail tie down is uh, untied. I'm going to check all the control surfaces and the mechanical linkages. And that will complete our pre-flight for that part of the aircraft. As you progress from the cabin towards the rear of the aircraft, call the empennage. Take note of the general condition of the skin. Are there any rivets missing? Are there any large dints or cracks in the skin? Once you arrive at the horizontal stabiliser, you can now start part two of the checklist. The first step is to remove the tail tie down. Remove this before flight and place it neatly on the ground. Now need to check the control surfaces, so check the free movement and condition. The horizontal stabiliser is a non-movable surface that may include a black rubber strip on the leading edge to prevent dents and nicks during soft field operations. Check for any dents and cracks along the leading edge. The elevator check, you need to check the full range of movement. There are three cavities to check where the elevator is mounted to the stabiliser. It is required to check the assembly of the bonding cables, screws, nuts, push rods for any rust or damage. Checking the rudder from the left hand side, check the rudder cable isn't frayed or damaged. The required elements are present. Check the large hole for the movement of the belt crank when you raise and lower the elevator. Working your way up the vertical stabiliser, confirm the rudder is securely fastened by looking for any missing nuts, bolts or screws. Once at the top, we'll then complete the same procedure moving down. 
checking the trim tab, you need to confirm that the trim tab assembly is correct by checking its security. The way we do that is lifting the elevator up and down and making sure that the trim tab moves with the elevator. Again, checking the elevator will check the full range of movement. There are three cavities to check on the left hand side and the right hand side where the elevator is mounted to the stabiliser. It's required to check the assembly of the bonding cables, screws, nuts, push rods for any rust or damage. The horizontal stabiliser on the right hand side of the aircraft is a non movable surface that may include a black rubber strip on the leading edge to prevent dents, nicks during soft field operations. Check for any dents and cracks along the leading edge. Step 3 on our pre flight inspection for the 172R model is inspecting the right wing. We need to check that the flaps are working, the ailerons are working, check the wheels and make sure that the wing is untied. We also need to dip the tanks and check how much fuel is on board the aircraft. Once we've completed this, we can then move on to the nose section. Gently move the flap up and down from the trailing edge. There should be a small amount of travel. Check the flap flange assembly for any cracks, damage or rust. Also check the security of any nuts and screws working your way across to the tip of the wing. Check any inspection panels for missing screws. Check the flat push rod by gently twisting it. There will be a small amount of movement, but don't force it to move. Check the flat flange assembly for any cracks, damage or rust. Also check the security for any nuts and screws, working your way across to the tip of the wing. Check any inspection panels for missing screws. We can now check the aileron. We need to check the free movement and security. You can move the aileron up and down as you perform this check. The opposite aileron moving in the opposite direction. Located on the hinge line are two hinge assemblies that need to be checked with four nuts on each assembly. Located in the middle is a push rod. Gently twist this push rod to check for a small amount of movement. Next we can untie the right wing. Moving towards the main wheel we need to check for the inflation and condition of the tyre. Need to check proper inflation and general condition checking for any wear from the weather, the tread depth, and if there are any bald spots or cracks on the tyre. Once we've checked the main wheel tyre, we then need to check the fuel. You can drain at least a cup full of fuel from each sump location to check for water, sediment, and the proper grade of fuel. You should see 100 low lead fuel, which is coloured blue, before each flight and after each refueling. Water is observed, take further samples until clear, and then gently rock the wings and lower the tail to the ground to move any additional contaminants to all the sampling points. And all contamination has been removed. If contaminants are still present, refer to the warning in the POH and do not fly the aircraft. Once we've drained the fuel, we need to check it visually. To check the amount of fuel, we'll need to step up to the wing. To check the fuel, insert the dipstick straight down and bring the dipstick out to read the quality of fuel and place the fuel filler, fuel filler cap back on. To check that there's no contaminants in the fuel, make sure that you're holding the cup of fuel into the light and there's no water or sediments at the bottom of the fuel. Once we've completed the pre-flight inspection on the right wing, we can now move to the nose section. On the nose section, we're going to be completing a drain of three fuel ports. We're going to be checking the propeller, the spinner, the engine, the engine oil, and the, the main wheel strut as well. First thing we need to do is conduct a fuel drain. Drain at least a cup full of fuel from the three valves to check the water, sediment, and proper fuel grade before each flight and after each refuel. If water is observed, take further samples until clear and then gently rock wings and lower tail to the ground to move any additional contaminants to the sample point. Once we've completed the fuel drain, we can now check the oil. The minimum oil level for a VFR flight is 5 quarts. Check the oil level, then check, check the dipstick filler cap is secure. Do not operate the aircraft with less than 5 quarts. Fill to 8 quarts for extended flights. Once we've checked the oil, we can now move to the nose of the propeller. We now need to check that the air intakes are clear of any foreign object debris. It's important to check for any bird's nest, especially over spring. We now need to check the condition of the alternator belt and the flywheel. We can now check the propeller. 
for any dints or nicks along the blade face and the blade back in both the leading and trailing edges of the propeller. Moving down, check the spinner and make sure all the nuts and screws are in the correct position and continue to check the other side of the propeller, the blade face, the blade back and both the leading and trailing edges. Moving down towards the main gear, check the air filter is clear of any obstructions or foreign matter. To check the nose wheel strut and tyre, check the inflation and condition. Check the oleo strut, which is the outer cylinder fixed to the airframe. It should be roughly four fingers of height. If it is flat or sitting on the flange, let the instructor know. Check the shimmy dampener for security and any, and any general wear and tear. Now that we've completed the nose inspection, we can now move on to our last item on the checklist, which is the left wing. On the left wing, we're going to be looking at the pitot tube, the stall on, the lights, the aileron and the flaps. We're also going to drain and dip the tanks as well. Once we've completed that, we can then move into the cabin and finalise the pre -plan. Starting off from the left wing, we need to conduct the fuel drain. We need to drain at least a cup full of fuel from each sump location to check the water, sediment and proper grade of fuel for each flight and after each refuel. Once you've drained all five drain sumps, make sure to check the fuel visually for any contaminants in the jar. We now need to dip the tanks to check the amount of fuel we need to step up onto the wing. To check the fuel, insert the dipstick straight down and bring the dipstick out to read the quantity of fuel and place the fuel filler cap back on. Once we've drained the tanks, we can now check the leading edge of the left wing. Starting off with the pitot tube, make sure that there's no foreign object debris inside the pitot tube. Moving along to the fuel vent, make sure that that's not blocked. You can then check the stall horn warning system with a stall horn tester. And you can continue walking along the leading edge of the aircraft looking for any dints or nicks. Work your way to the landing and taxi lights and check for their security and then work to the end of the wing and check that the navigation and strobe lights are in. From there, we can now check the aileron, check the free movement and security. Move the aileron up and down. As you perform this check, the opposite aileron will be moving in the opposite direction. Located on the hinge line are two hinge assemblies that need to be checked. Look for four nuts on each assembly. Located in the middle is a push rod. Gently twist this push rod to check for a small amount of movement. And you can also untie the wing as well. Now we can check the flap, security and condition. Is similar to the right wing, we can now gently move the flap up and down from the trailing edge and there should be a small amount of movement. You can check the flap flange assembly for any cracks, damage or rust. Also check the security of any nuts and screws. Working your way across to the tip of the wing, check any inspection panels for missing screws. Check the flap pushrod by gently twisting it. There will be a small amount of movement but don't force it to move. Check the flap fan flange assembly for any cracks, damage or rust. Finally, we can check the main wheel for inflation and condition. Check for the tread depth and any general wear and tear alongside checking that the brake lines are secure and there's no leaks. So that now concludes our pre-flight inspection for the 172R model. We now need to make sure that the daily inspection has been signed and completed and that all of our documentation is on board the aircraft. It's always important when you're doing your pre-flight inspection to make sure you're always using a checklist to know exactly where you are on the aircraft. If you find something that you're not sure about or you don't know what to do, always go and ask your instructor.